look too big, it's Louise Bighead, but quite lovely to see you. Hope you're well, hope you're having a good day. Wherever it is you are and whatever it is you're doing, it is Wednesday here. Wednesday the 28th of March uh, in a small village just outside Cambridge in, on the east, in the east of England. That's where we are today. I'm sat looking at, it has rained all day today, but it's looking quite nice now. And I can see the daffodils nodding their heads at me, which is all very lovely. So, hello, how are you? How are you, Booktube? Are you well? I haven't been around for ages. It's a very busy time at the moment. And I will get into that on a video that I'm going to do next week. I'm going to do a, try and do a catch up video. Um, and I also want to do an Agatha Christie video next week. So it's not going to be this week. So you've got the whole of Easter if you are reading Murder at the Vicarage, which I have here. And you've got the whole of next week to read it or watch it or listen to it or whatever it is that you're doing. It's First Miss Marple and that's the book for the very casual Agatha Christie book club, Casual Christie Club. That is the book that we are reading and the book that I have read this month. So there we go. And um, I have chosen next the next book for the next round. I just want to double check that it is exactly what I think it is so that I'm not leading us astray. But that's the book that we're reading at the moment. You are welcome to join in any way, shape or form the very casual Agatha Christie book club or the casual Christie club, Murder at the Vicarage. So I read that this month and I'm here to tell you about the other books that I have read this month. Um, 28th, it's nearly the end of March. I'm not going to read many more books, I don't think, looking at what's coming ahead in the next couple of days. Um, so I just wanted to catch you up because I've read quite a lot this month and I just thought, well, let's just catch up with the, read the books that I have read because there have been some good ones. There have been some good ones this month and I want to make sure that I do remember to tell you about them. So the first book that I read this month and the first book that I really enjoyed this month is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. It's a lovely big juicy hardback at the moment. It's only come out in the last couple of months, such as why it's a nice big juicy hardback. I treated myself to it at the in February as my kind of hardback that I go into the bookshop and buy. It is a murder mystery with time travel. So our protagonist um, does the same day over and over again, but with a twist. Um, somebody asked me on... YouTube, and I'm terribly sorry, I can't remember your name, said, do I think it would be a good audio book? Or is it one of those that you need to keep flip flipping back? Now, I am somebody that can let things roll over me and I will gather, I gather the, the salient information as I go. I'm not too worried about trying to retain people's names or knowing exactly what's happening. And um, I trust myself that I, I will pick it up eventually. And, you know, more often than not, I do and I don't have an issue with that. Um, I think with this book, because it's the same day... I think it might be best to read it. I'm sure you can do it as an audio, but it'd have to be a very experienced narrator to get the difference. And I think it's easier to read rather than to listen to, would be my um, take on it. But I am somebody that, with audiobooks, I do let things roll up over me. I quite often... Um, have books that I've previously read or stories that I know that I know what's coming so I don't have to listen to every word so I'm probably not the best person to give recommendations for audios because I have a very particular kind of book that I listen to as an audio I don't have a vast experience of listening to across genres and for example sci-fi I've not listened to very much at all so this I, I would hesitate about saying it would be a good audio and I don't know whether it's available as an audio yet um, but as a book to read, I thoroughly enjoyed and would highly recommend. Let it roll over you, though, people. If you're, like somebody, if you're somebody that likes a lot of world building to be explained, you are not going to get that. Let it roll over you and trust that that is supposed to happen and that eventually you will get it. And that's part of the joy of the book. OK, so the next book I read, I haven't got, I've actually, it's in the other room, and that's River of Darkness by Rene Arth which is R-E-N-N-I-E, -E, and then Arth, which is A-I-R-T-H. And I do seem to have a way of saying it that sounds like arse. <laughs> Arth. I'm sure I sound like arse. 
I was saying it to somebody the other day, and she was like, Ready, boss? Really? And I was like, No, no, Arth. And I'm like, Oh. Um, so, yes, but it's very good. It was a um, first in the John Haddon Inspector series, Inspector John Haddon series. It's the first book set in 1921. Um, in Sussex it's completely in my wheelhouse it is a murder mystery in the 1920s jobs are good it was grand though I really enjoyed it the period setting oh gorgeous loads of detail if you're a detail lover like I am so I've got my cup of tea and my lovely heart mug I'm trying a new tea somebody sent me this and I thought I'd have a go at it it's Cherry Blackwell green tea. I don't do well with green tea. There's an awful lot of green teas out there and there's an awful lot of them I don't like. Um, I have yet to find my green tea. So I thought I'd give this a go. And it says here we recommend brewing for only two minutes. I think I did it for longer. So is that going to affect the taste of it? I've got a friend who likes uh, pomegranate green tea and she just she drinks gallons of it. Ooh. I wouldn't say it tastes like cherry blackwell, but oh, now that actually is quite nice. It's sweet without being too sweet. Ooh. Oh, maybe I found my green tea, and you were here for it. Anyway, that's not why we were here. Um, the next book I read was Messenger of Truth by Jacqueline Winspear. I've got my list down here. I've got my book. So when I finish a book, I always write it in my. This is a kind of my book tube and book record book and I have notes and I have quotes and I have pictures in here and I also have a list there we go of all the books I read on the days I finish them so that's what I'm looking at if you're wondering what I'm looking at um is Messenger of Truth by Jacqueline Winspear this is the fourth Ma Maisie Dobbs book it's the fifth one I read I read one of the kind of seventh or eighth books um, and I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. And somebody said to me, you need to start at the beginning. And so I did. I started with Maisie Dobbs by um, Jacqueline Winspear, which is the first one. And I loved it. Maisie Dobbs is a private investigator in the 1920s and we're now in the 1930s. Um, and she's a, it, she's, it's quite a cool read. It's full of description. It's a murder mystery. Yes, this is a murder mystery. Or was, is it a murder mystery? It's a mystery. There's an accidental death. Is it murder or is it accidental? And I read it over a period of weeks. I kept picking up other books. For example, I picked up The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I picked up another book as well. Um... And I would go back to it and it felt really comforting. So I I really like the Jacqueline Winspear books. And I can, when I put my mind to them, just charge through them. I have a noisy cat next to me. Here I end. No. No. Hello. Yeah. I know I'm just talking to some nice people about books. So if you don't mind, you can go out, but not through that door. Oh, never mind. It'll be fun. Really enjoyed it. Um, if you haven't tried Jacqueline Winspear and you like those kind of murder mysteries set in that period, oh, Maisie Dobbs, go for it. Then I read, oh, I did a couple of rereads and I'll go back to them at the end. Um, this is the next book I'm going to talk about. I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. What, now, when I talked about this in a previous um, video, I had quite a lot of people said that they're going to go and get it. It is a true crime book about the Golden State Killer or otherwise known as the East Area Rapist, who was known to be um, attacking women and then women and men in their beds um, in Sacramento in the late 1970s. And then it looks like he actually continued doing nastiness um, across California into the 1980s as well. And he has never been found. And this is a book by Michelle McNamara, and it says, One Woman's Obsessive Search for the Golden State Killer. It is brilliant. Now, I will put a caveat with this. Now, um, you know straight on at the beginning that Michelle McNamara doesn't finish this book. She dies during it. And that um, it is... So this isn't the finished book that she written. She wrote. A lot of it is, and then towards the end, they are putting things together from her notes. Or you, somebody that else that was interested in cold cases that had a lot of connections with her and that had a lot of two of them that had um, that worked with her in kind of 
in the true crime armchair detective community. Um, they write, and I think when it's her voice, the book sings. She has an amazing way of making these awful events readable because they are awful but she brings home how awful they were and this is I was when I in the last video I said this is one of the few books recently uh, that I can remember gave me the absolute heebie-jeebies to the point where I had to stop reading it one night because I got myself into such a state and all and and it and it is the power of her words the power of her words and, and how she puts it together and her phrases and, and how she describes it and how she laid it out and the and the timing of it and everything, it just got to me. And so she's she's such a good book. It's one of those books that's since I've read it, has lived with me. And um, so it's a true crime book. And if you like true crimes or you're interested in those kind of real life crimes, I this is one of the the few that I've read recently that I would rave about, I would say that if you've got any interest in that, you should pick up a copy. It is, it's only been published recently, and so it is only available in large format paperback. Um, in the UK, I don't know if it's, a, 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 you know, um, available abroad, and it may be difficult to get through libraries, but if you can, then do, because it's brilliant. So it's I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. Oh, it's just so good. It's so good. Anyway, uh... I also read Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. Now, I have tried this twice before, and I was kind of reading this. So you can see I've been reading a lot of murder mysteries. I was kind of reading this because it was um, March Mystery Madness. March Madness Mystery. Mystery March Madness. I can't remember the hashtag. I do apologise. Um, but it was that, because it was our mystery month. I was like, I am going to read this. Because I have tried twice to read this. I have tried it once on audio and I have tried just sitting reading it and I didn't get on with it. But so many people said, oh, you'll really enjoy it. You'll really enjoy it. Have you read Magpie Murders? You'll really enjoy it. Oh, have you read that book by Anthony Horowitz? It's Magpie Murders. And I just thought, I can't have that many people recommend book, a book to me and, it, and then be so out of step. Because, you know, a lot of the people that I that recommend these people know my taste because they've been watching the video for a while. Excuse me while I slurp. Still nice. And I just thought, well, it can't be. It can, they can't be that off. So I persevered a lot more. <gasps> now, I get it. I get it. I needed to give it a bit longer. Now, there are some books that you just need to give it a bit longer. I felt when I was reading it before and when I was listening to it, it felt like a pastiche. It felt too much like it was playing homage and it was putting the things in that you should have in those um, 1930s murder mysteries or 1940s or 1950s murder mysteries. And it didn't feel like it was true. It felt like it was, um, it was written with a knowing glint in its eye. And I'm not keen on that. I, I just, it's just not my kind of reading. So... But the more I read it, the more I actually got really sucked into the story. And, sorry, I've got the, the cat is now coming up here. Oh, hello. Black tail. Um, oh, it's disturbed my train of thought. Cheeky. Um, I, I, I got caught into the story and I wanted to know. And I found myself unwittingly captivated by it and by the tone and by the mystery and maybe tell um by everything i really did i just I just it was a really good book do you want to come so i read it there we go i read it and uh i really enjoyed it so it was quite a chunky book and actually when i picked it up i was like oh i'm not sure i'm in the mood for a chunky book i'm in the mood for a for a quick read i did i thought i'm in the mood for a quick read and it was this book has it got a, a bird on it, Mum? Yes. Um, and it, I just, it was really good. So I highly recommend it now. So I'm one of those people that says now, have you read Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz? Because it's really good. And if you're one of those people that said it to me, you were right. You, I, I heeded your advice and I gave it a read. I did. And uh, it was really good and I highly recommend it. So I haven't done well this month. I've had some really good books this month. Doesn't stop there. 
Let's carry on as this video is going to be stupidly long, and we don't want that. I picked up Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo because I wanted something a bit different. I wanted, I'd, I'd read quite a lot of murders, and there's only so many murder mysteries that I can read in a go, and I can read a lot of murder mysteries in a go, before I went, ooh. And I think because I'd read some good ones, I needed a break. I wasn't in the mood for a mediocre murder mystery. I quite often read mediocre murder mysteries with gladness in my heart, but I, I just thought I've had too many good ones to be sullied by a mediocre one. So I didn't want a mediocre one, so I went to a different kind of book. So it's a YA fantasy, and it is a heist book set in the Grisha world. Um, so Lee Bardugo did the Grisha trilogy, which is Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, Ruin and Rising. Um, and this is set in that world with none of the previous characters and only refers to them or refers to one character in particular in passing. So for those people that have asked me, do I need to have read the Grisha trilogy before reading this? No, I really don't believe you do. It's very much a fantasy, a YA heist book, but a really good one. A really good YA fantasy heist book. I think you could, I mean, you could, it is YA in the fact that the protagonists are all 17 and 18. Um, and I saw a brilliant tweet by somebody the other day saying, I've just turned 17. So if you want to, <laughs> if you want to involve me in any of these kind of fantasies or quests or you know, kind of uh, contemporary romances, I, I'm now ready for you. I'm, I'm, I've read enough books. I know what I've got to do, <laughs> which really made me laugh. Um, because, I, I mean, it's such a type, isn't it? However, that doesn't stop them being really enjoyable to read. And it had... Like, there's a relationship in here that had a quite a bit of tension. And you know, my heartstrings, I'm not going to deny it, they were pulled. I mean, they're easily pulled. But um, I just, it, could, I, it was so good, so good. So, of course, I had to buy and therefore read the sequel, which is Crooked Kingdom. So they're both quite chunky. They've both got a bit of heft to them. This, Six of Crows, my edition is just under 500 pages, and this is about 530 pages. So they're both quite chunky books, but they read so much quicker. I do think people have struggled somewhat with The Crooked Kingdom um, because there's a lot of tying up. But I didn't mind it. I thought it was good. I was... I think how she'd put together the heist and, and what have you was so well done. I could never do that in a month of Sundays, let's be honest. I have no kind of craftiness in that way whatsoever. But I just think it was really well done. And the world building was seamless. I just thought it was so good. I really did. I got swept away and read both of them in a matter of four days. I just couldn't put them down. I wanted the world to stop. I woke up early one morning um, to, to actually give myself a little bit of time to, to read this before I had to get up and, and start my day. And I just didn't want to get up. I just wanted to lie in bed and read. And it's just, you, you want that some days, don't you? You want to just say to the world, any chance I could just take today off because my book is great and I'm really enjoying it. And I will be a happy person if I can sit here and read this all day. Unfortunately, the world was unfeeling and went, no, get up. <laughs> Go and empty the kitty litter. Yeah, that's what many of my mornings feature. So anyway, really recommend Six of, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. Great. Um, then the final three books... Oh, I read um, an audio book I read was Still Life by Louise Penny, and this is the first in the Gamash Inspector, Chief Inspector Gamash series. Um, I listened to it on audio. It took me a while to get into it because um, I was fiddling and fiddling back and I wasn't concentrating on it. Um, but eventually, I think it was something like a nine hour audio book. I listen, I don't, I don't know how people can listen to them fast. I have no urge to do that, I'll be honest. I quite like a, a slow delivery. And I, um, by about two hours in, maybe an hour and a half, oh, 
was great. I really enjoyed it. And I will be continuing with them as audiobooks. So eventually I will get the second one and then the third one. Really liked it, really enjoyed it. Recommend those. And then I did some rereads, and these were very much palette cleansers um, because of mysteries. I just wanted a quick book to read. So I read two steamy, horsey romances. Romance, and that's Angel's Blood and um, Angel's Blood and Archangel's Blade by Nalini Singh. These are paranormal romances featuring angels and vampires and and sauciness. And who doesn't like a little bit of sauciness in the month? I like. And then after reading Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, um, it made me think of that kind of heist feeling well it was a heist book and I remembered that this one Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maths which is the fourth in the Throne of Glass series had a similar feel had a similar feel and so I gave this a quick reread so I know it's a big book but having read it before you kind of you kind of fly through it don't you, you kind of you know what's coming and so yeah you look forward to the bits that you want to read so I enjoyed that as well so it was as good it was a good reread and actually it complemented them and it made me realize how good Six of Crows was because although this was this was a good fun read that was much better I think she went downhill after this this one but that's just me I, oh, I don't know whether I'm going to read the next one I've read some of it but oh anyway so there we go so that was one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12. So I've read loads this month. I've read 12. And it hasn't felt like I've had to push myself. The only one I've had to push myself on was Magpie Murders to get kind of into it. But once I was into it, it's been great. It's been grand. So it's been a good reading month. And there we go. There we go, book chip. That's my kind of recent reads wrap up for March. And now I am going to drink the rest of this and I'm going to record a quick haul. I have some other books, but they're not mystery books. These are the other books that I have been getting recently. And I look forward to sharing those with you. Um, I hope you are having a good end of March that you're looking for. If you celebrate Easter, you are looking forward to your Easter celebrations. And if you've got any time off over that, we have um, bank holiday on the Friday and the Monday. So it's a, even if you are not religious or you're not faith-based, um, there is a good chance you've got some time off and that you might be able to spend time with people. So I hope that you're having a good time and that you're looking forward to your weekend. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. This has been a lovely booktube and I look forward to seeing you again.